Hello there, my name is Mike and I am a member of the APSS, the Aviation Preservation Society of Scotland. And for many years now, the guys have been building a Sopwith one and a half strutter, which is a First World War biplane and it is nearing completion. Now that's not the only thing that the APSS do. Another section is the radio and radar section. And one of the subjects we were discussing before this COVID lockdown is the fact that the strutters used to carry spark transmitters that were received on the ground by crystal radio sets. And so because none of us are really interested in building jigsaws while we're locked down, we thought that a few of us would get some crystal radio sets off the internet and build them. So we've all bought, well, four of us have bought um, one each, a different type each, and we're all building them and trying them to see how we get on with them. And uh, it's an interesting little project. So I have mine, it's arrived in a box, and I'm about to start building it. So I thought I would video it, see how I get on. So here we go. Before we go any further, I wanted to show you this. It's a set made for the BBC, or branded for the BBC, made over a hundred years ago for the general public. And this is a crystal radio set. Now the reason they call it a crystal radio set is because of this. And this as you can see, is the Mighty Atom wireless crystal. And it is one of the components inside this set. It's um, lead sulfate crystal, as you can see there. Try and let that come into focus. You can see the crystal there. And that crystal is actually here on the set. And there's a tiny, tiny little piece of wire there that is controlled by this. And it's to tune the radio, you would do a bit of feeling about with the wire, touching the crystal in various places. And they call that wire the cat's whisker. As you can see on the box. So these crystals act as a diode in the circuit. And as you can see, there was room for two crystals. But on this side, we have a modern diode instead of the original gallium crystal. The set was connected directly to an earphone, what they call telephones here, to allow the listener to hear the radio stations. So let me show you the contents of the box that arrived from the interweb. As you can see, there aren't very many components involved in a crystal radio set. It's very simple. There's no amplifier, there's no batteries, there's no loudspeaker. Basically, you have some wiring, some enameled wiring, some wires for connection and for antenna. You have a variable capacitor here, some crocodile clips, a few screws that are going to help me mount the whole thing onto the board and solder it all together, some feet for the board, some solder and some sandpaper for cleaning up the screws before they get soldered, a diode and a resistor that will be going into the circuit, and of course, an earpiece so that I can hear the radio stations, hopefully. And up here, we have the internal tube out of uh, kitchen roll that I've just finished because that is what this enameled wire is going to be wound around. And of course, we have the instructions that come with it. And the supplier has very kindly even included some pictures to help with the building. 
of this project. So getting started, you can see on the instructions that uh, some positions have been drawn out on the board itself. Um, to save getting pencil marks on the board, I've actually used some tape instead to mark out the positions that the nine screws are going to be screwed into. So when I remove the tape, there won't be any pencil marks. So it'll just look a little bit tidier. So first step will be to drill out these holes and fit the screws and tin them. So I'll get to it and drill the holes for nine screws. So all the screws have been fitted and they need to be tinned with solder now so that uh, the components can be soldered to them. And before I go ahead and try and put solder on the screw heads, um, I'm using a piece of sandpaper that's supplied to gently rub the top of the screws to completely clean off any surface oxidization or surface coating because the solder will not stick or adhere to the brass unless it is pure brass or pure metal. And if you try and make solder stick to anything else that hasn't been prepared properly, then it just won't. Simple as that. So I've got nine screws to clean up and tin with solder. So that's the next step. So all of the screws have been tinned now. So there's solder on the head of every single screw. And as you can see, I've soldered the capacitor, the variable capacitor to the three screws here. So the next step will be to start soldering the components to the screw heads. The idea of tinning them is so that if you apply solder to both pieces that you're going to join together, then as soon as you apply heat to the solder, it melts on both items and the solder holds them together when it cools down. So, first of all, there's a small diode that has to go in place here across these two screws. As you can see, the wires are too long at the moment, so I'll be cutting the wires to size. And also, when I'm holding it to be soldered on into place, I won't be holding the wire with my fingers. Fortunately, there are a couple of crocodile clips in the kit, so I'll use the crocodile clips to help me hold the components while I solder them, because the heat travels up that wire very quickly and it could get a bit hot. On your fingers in actual fact you will burn them if you try that so try and avoid that at all costs the next thing to do will be to cut up the wire and connect the wire to the various components as well um, as described in the instructions so that's the next part of the project so that's the wires cut to length and stripped at the tip, ready for tinning. And if you're getting into soldering things, I have to tell you that this little device is a lifesaver. Because as you start soldering things, you'll find that you always need more than two hands, at least three. So this little device is absolutely ideal for holding your work while you solder it and it also comes with a little magnifying glass so that you can see what you're doing if you need it so apply a little bit of solder to the tip of the soldering iron 
and then onto the wires. And that's them tinned. I'm going to do this more off camera because it's a lot easier. But that gives you an idea of how it's done. So another thing I'd like to point out while I'm doing all this soldering and tinning is that all modern solders for this purpose, let me just clean the tip up again, you'll notice that even though it's hot, sometimes the solder doesn't melt against the surface. There it goes now. Modern solders actually have a core inside them that has flux. And the idea is that that flux allows the solder to clean, self-clean and flow. And you'll find that if it's not flowing, just touching the solder with the extra flux in it allows it to flow. That's all the tinning done. So now that both the tip of the wire and the top of the screw have been tinned, the theory is that you should just be able to press the two together and apply some heat from the soldering iron to make it stick. One thing you have to remember when you're soldering though is that whatever the component or the piece that you're soldering to is, as you can see, if it's quite large and even this small screw is quite large in these terms, it can suck a lot of the heat out of the tip of the soldering iron which stops it from doing its job. Now I have a... a soldering iron that I can adjust the temperature on and so I've wound it right up to the top to make sure that I can get enough heat, sufficient heat transferred through the solder, through the tinned pieces to allow the solder on both pieces to melt because unless the solder on both of these items melts and then solidifies, you won't have a decent joint. And giving it a wee tug and looking at the way that solder's dried or cooled down, that joint looks okay. On to the next one. So that's the soldering and the wiring finished and I've added another couple of wires here that will be for the headphones or for the earpiece. Um, the reason, the, in the instructions it shows you them uh, being connected directly here, but I intend to use the earpiece for other things and so I'll have it in a disconnectable format somewhere around about here. So that's all done. The final part of the project is winding the enameled wire onto the uh, cardboard tubing. Now I'm lucky enough to have a little spooler that's uh, used for soldering um, but I've put the enameled wire bobbin on it and um, I've taken the tube um, as per the instructions and punched a hole in it with a pin so you can see the hole here, the wires fed through it. There's about 68 inches inside the tube just now. They'll be taken out to connect to the board. I've marked it as well because in the instructions it tells you that you need to turn 180 turns on the tube. So 180 turns of uh, enameled wire on the tube. And then another hole in the other end to put the enameled wire through and the two pieces of wire will connect to these two terminals there. So that's the next part of the project. It's not 180 turns 
and it's not 120 turns as I'm about to say, it's 110 turns. Well, that's 100 turns so far, 20 more to go. And I can tell you, I certainly wouldn't want to do this as a job. Um, it requires a fair bit of concentration and uh, I sincerely hope that I don't let go by mistake because I'd have to start again. Well, that's it. Um, it wasn't 120 turns, I just checked, it's 110. So that's 110 done and um, I'm holding the wire here very very carefully but as you can see I've taped it so that if it does let go we don't have a disaster on our hands um, so the next thing to do is to punch another little hole in here and um, feed the excess wire through and connect it up and so we're done that's the whole thing assembled. I've uh, taken the cardboard tube and um, I've glued it with hot glue to the board. I've also hot glued a little terminal here so that I can connect the ear piece up. I have the uh, antenna wire crocodile clipped onto this side and the earth wire on the crocodile clip on this side. Um, the earth wire will go to a uh, pole that I drive into the ground to earth the device and then we'll see if it works. Well I've tried it, there is some sound, not very much I have to admit, but then again there's no amplification, you wouldn't expect it to be too much. I think I'm going to mess about a bit more with the antenna and with the earth to see if I can improve on the sound. Anyway that's the end of the project. I hope it's inspired you to do a little bit yourself. Thanks very much for watching.